morning. How are you? See through oh, you might. Uh, it's a big old dome of mine. That was on the radio. Let's see what gets you back on the radio again. Me? Yeah. They got they had me on last oh, week or whatever. Fill in for me down the road yeah. On a, on a Tuesday. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the meeting of the Tulare County Board of Supervisors. Uh, let us all please stand at this time for the flag salute, followed by a moment of silence. We will be led today by Supervisor Ennis. Salute pledge. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. All right. We'll kick off the meeting today with item number one, and that's Board of Supervisors matters. And I will start immediately to my right, Supervisor Shucklin. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make sure you're ready. <laughs> I'm not. But, uh, you know, I really don't have anything uh, to report. Yeah, I should How's call on you first more often. Yes. Uh, Supervisor Worthley. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, last uh, Thursday, CSAC had the regional meeting down in uh, uh, Bakersfield. There were about six different supervisors there, <laughs> including one from Santa Clara County, which surprised me a little bit. Or Con I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, one of those northern counties. And uh, I was on a uh, panel that talked about water storage, uh, primarily, of course, on um, Temperance Flat. Uh, it was. It was well received by the folks who were there, and also uh, my main reason for being there was that the, my co-host on that panel was a member of the Water Commission. The Water Commission is who we have to present an application to to seek funding from Prop 1. Of the $2.7 billion, which are for storage projects, the Water Commission are, is the, are the folks who will be actually making those distributions, so I thought it was important to try to get uh, alongside that individual. We also had a meeting uh, Friday morning of the uh, authority, the JPA on the Temperance Flat, and um, uh, had, had a very good report about uh, the technical committee working on some details about benefits of this project, which extend beyond just what were the obvious ones of storage and recharge, but actually trying to uh, operate the system in conjunction with other dams and other reservoirs throughout California in a way to maximize the benefit. And there's many opportunities to do that, and that, of course, was not taken into consideration by the uh, Bureau of Reclamation when they did their feasibility report. Um, tomorrow, or I mean tonight, we'll be headed up to Sacramento for our meetings in, Sac in uh, Sacramento with our delegation and different folks. And then I have an air district meeting on this Thursday. So another busy week. Thank you. All right. Supervisor Ennis. Oh. I ah, threw you oh, off there, oh, right? I got an order. You <laughs> kind of scared me there. I know I did. Go for it. <laughs> you woke him up. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this coming Thursday, we'll be having our Eastern Thule Groundwater Management Meeting in Porterville at 2 o'clock. Uh, we continue to look at Success Dam, the irrigation districts, and uh, seeing if we can get the sandbags in the spillway. You know, we've done that twice. I think the last time it was sandbagged was in the 90s. And by doing so, you can uh, pick up an extra, about an extra 27,000 acre feet of water. The runoff right now estimated from our watershed into the uh, Success Dam area is about 150 to 160,000 uh, acre feet. So you can see the, the dam holds 82.5, but if we can have that come in slowly and we can retain as much water as possible without worrying about a warm storm coming in, uh, I think it's going to benefit not only the farmers, but it's going to benefit the whole area with recreation. Because uh, if that when that lake has about 110,000 acre feet of water in it, it's something to see. And if you're a water skier, it's uh, it's a paradise. But uh, 
the, the good thing about it is being able to sustain that success dam water because we've got 100% allocation from our Friant water now. So the farmers can use their Friant water. And then uh, early summer, then we can start releasing out of success dam and, and uh, keep that water for our area as long as possible. So hopefully it's in the Corps' hands now. I hope they'll make a decision here shortly. But uh, that's kind of where we stand on that. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank what you. a grand notion. Porterville of Paradise. That's amazing. <laughs> that's, that's, right. that's great, Mike. It can thank, be. thank you for sharing. Thank it you for sharing. Be. Supervisor Crocker. The double P. Uh, <laughs> I've got a RCRC board meeting uh, tomorrow, um, as, as well as our meetings uh, with the legislative uh, staff and members in Sacramento. And uh, Saturday, we've got Strathmore has a community cleanup that I will be uh, participating in. Uh, I probably need to be cleaned up myself a little bit. <laughs> and uh, also, the Lemon Cove Women's Club has their uh, open house uh, Saturday afternoon, so I'm looking forward to meeting with them. And, and uh, yesterday, I, I had a, uh, a nice tour of the Courage to Change uh, group home, which they're changing the, the naming, um, and that was... It's uh, out west of Exeter. It's really a, a phenomenal facility that we've got in, in Tulare County. It's, uh, it's, it, it really focuses on um, teens that, have, that are dealing with uh, gang issues uh, throughout the state and um, people that have uh, drug or alcohol addictions and uh, revitalizing them. And the young men that were at that facility, I think they can hold about 60 um, they were very respectful. Um, obviously, you know, some of them still have tattoos from, from and so it, it was very clear that they were, that they probably had some type of past, uh, but they they didn't exhibit that in their mannerism or uh, how they were, and it was just, you know, it was it was a great hour and a half just to, to see that uh, people can turn their lives around and that they're on the right path, and so it was, uh, for anyone that's, um, that, that, that's interested. I'm sure Susan Gambino would be very interested in, in providing more information about that. And it's right across the street from uh, International Papers. So I've driven past it many times and didn't even realize that it's uh, that that's what that facility was. But it's uh, it's a great thing where they they teach, they give high school diplomas and they have actual um, high school that they they work with uh, accredited through Exeter Unified. Um, they have on-site staff. They teach auto mechanics and other other vocational education that I think is missing in many of our regular schools. And um, it's just, um, just I, I was very impressed. So, all right. Well, hey, just be careful when you make comments about people with tattoos. I saw Ennis cringe down there. So you, yeah, you know, I we don't. We won't speak. ask where he yeah, is. Yeah, all right. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm sure you know, I, I was going to make a uh, make a comment about uh, a, a GSA Groundwater Sustainability Agency uh, meeting that uh, we had yesterday for the Greater Kawea. Uh, it was in Farmersville, uh, but uh, specifically one of the items that was highlighted in that meeting uh, was the effort uh, ongoing between the East Kawea and the Greater Kawea to resolve an overlap uh, situation where. Um, Eastern Kwea, East Kwea and Greater have claimed the same ground, about 16,000 acres uh, of overlapping ground to be included in each other's territory. And the state, we fortunately, because we're a critically overdrafted basin, we did receive some grant money from the state for some facilitation services. And I was very skeptical about the facilitation services and some of the personalities that were involved in this uh, overlap issue and resolving it, but when uh, you, you put it out there that we stand to lose our ability to maintain local control, uh, all of a sudden people come to the table very willing to uh, negotiate um, and, and resolve their differences. And so I, I feel very uh, optimistic that we are going to locally resolve this overlap issue and meet the time frames uh, set out by the legislature. So I thought that was really, uh, really great, and uh, I'm very, uh, very positive and optimistic about that. Uh, then the last thing I was going to mention, um, hope all of you enjoy college basketball, because I do. Uh, this week, UCLA Bruins, three seed, just saying. Uh, my team going to do very well representing 
Uh, all of the teams on this board of supervisors that we follow, go Bruins. So, just saying. Go dogs. Fresno State, how'd you guys do in the uh, NCAA? Oh, that's right. Sorry, Supervisor Crocker. All right. Okay. So, enough. Enough. A true fan attended the, the <laughs> tournament. But you notice they're both sitting up here, <laughs> the same level, and he made, paid much less for his education than you did. So, just saying. All right, saying. thank you. Yeah. Excellent point. Well, hey, 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 I, I, I had a scholarship, so I didn't yeah. necessarily have to pay as much either. So. But anyways, enough, enough said, enough said. All right. So uh, now we're going to move on to get to the real business of our agenda. Item number two, uh, we would like to recognize Lieutenant John Weller upon his retirement from the Sheriff's Department and recognize him for as many years of service. Uh, nothing like uh, calling someone out when they uh, uh, don't expect it. Sheriff Boudreaux, would you like to make any comments about uh, uh, your lieutenant who you're going to be re losing here? <laughs> Figure if you give the sheriff the opportunity to have a microphone in front of him, he'll take it. So go for it. Absolutely. I'll take that every time. Uh, to the members of the board, good morning. Hey, good CAO, morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you, Deanne. It's good to see you back in position. Um, I'd like to recognize John Weller uh, this morning. There's uh, multiple things that I could talk about with John, but I wanted to talk about um, a unique story way back in the day. <laughs> he actually was my training officer when I first started. Uh, <clears throat> back in the jail and I remember he and I working in the jail and him talking about his hunting experiences and and, uh, and and the like and so we have a couple funny stories as to either disagreements or opposites of opinion however you would like to put it and as we move up through our 30 years in career together he goes well that explains how I never made captain <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's right. You should have agreed with me all the way from the beginning, John. So, I don't think that's true. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not true. John's been just an outstanding employee with the Sheriff's Department. When we talk about dedication and loyalty to the cause of the community, when we talk about truly loving the county as a whole, loving the Department of the Sheriff, or Office of the Sheriff, there's no one that rises to the highest level of expectations than John Weller. Um, I consider John a very good friend, a trusted friend, and one who has served the office of the sheriff and the citizens of this county in a way that you really, it's difficult to measure. Um, you know, he doesn't really accept words like this uh, very easily, and, and, and I believe that he may even get a little emotional because of the love he has for this county, has love for this office. And many of us in the sheriff's office have grown up with john he has many friends in the audience and i just have nothing but complimentary words we're sad to see him go um, when he had even mentioned the, the thought of retirement we were taken back in the fact that oh no now we have to be looking at who would fill his shoes and <clears throat> in the office of the sheriff as you know we have multiple areas that you could be placed into there's not one position in the office of the sheriff that john can't step into take off running the very next day and make it successful. So with that, I just want to compliment John on his retirement. I'm so thankful as my friend uh, that, that he is looking to potentially come back and run our shooting range and do some things there in the position, uh, hopefully as a reserve sergeant, to carry on the tradition of training in that era, in that or, uh, genre, uh, because he truly is an asset. So with that, John, thank you very much well, for your service. You, Lieutenant, would you like to come over here and join me? Sure. All right. Well, uh, Lieutenant Weller, it is really a pleasure. Can I call you John for this sure, presentation? Sure. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> My middle name is John. Just thought I'd mention that to you. Um, <laughs> Anyways, um, it is really an honor and a privilege to present the highest honor that Tulare County can bestow upon uh, an employee or an individual within this county to you. Uh, on behalf of the county and on behalf of the board, I'm so grateful for um, your many years of service. From September 2nd, 1986, I was two at that time. <laughs> Actually, not even two. I was, I, was turning, I was turning two uh, when you began. I was... Still uh, 11 months and 20 days at that time, but just saying. Um, all the way through St. Patrick's Day of 2017, uh, you have served this county, served our citizens, 
and, and seriously made a tremendous impact on the people that you have vied to protect your whole life. Um, and we are so grateful for that service and uh, really wish you the best in your retirement and may the best years of your life be ahead of you. You will be missed. Uh, your impact will definitely uh, be felt in the department uh, and you have left a, a lasting impression on those beneath you, including the sheriff that you helped train to be uh, sort of the outstanding guy that he is today. Um, hopefully you didn't help much with his speaking because uh, I'm kidding. Uh, but we appreciate everything, John, and uh, wish you the best in your Thank retirement. Thank you, sir. Thank you very Congratulations. much. Congratulations. I wouldn't mind. Go, okay. go for it. We'd love, I'd love to share the microphone with you. Well, I would like to thank uh, uh, the board, uh, uh, CAO's office, and uh, uh, Mr. Spada for, for providing me with this, uh, honoring me with this, uh, with this award. I feel quite humble. And also for the very kind words that the sheriff said. The sheriff's white. He and I go back years, and uh, we're very good friends. And uh, it's been my honor and privilege to work for him. Um, not that I want to take up a lot of time, but he has really taken the sheriff's office to new levels that uh, we didn't even uh, have the vision that uh, that he did. And uh, it's uh, it's been quite an honor to see what he's done with it. And I am going to come back uh, because I want to be part of it to continue on to see what else he comes up with. Uh, he's. Uh, He's quite unique, and he's done a wonderful job with the sheriff's office. I would also like to say, uh, it was in 1986, I lateraled down here from San Francisco as a deputy sheriff there for three and a half years prior. And uh, my wife and I moved here uh, because we wanted a wholesome community to raise our children to be able to afford a, a home. And, you know, it was the wisest decision that we ever made. And I have to thank my wife, Dee, who's back there filming this, because it was her decision. Thank you. She was the one that said we should move here, and she was right. And, uh, you know, after that, I realized I had to listen to everything she said because she's brighter than I am. So with that, I'd just like to say thank you all. And uh, once again, thank you, Sheriff, and thank you to the board. I just want to say, Mr. Chairman, uh, congratulations, John, and, and um, uh, you're a very wise man because um, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> and congratulations on your, on your retirement. Hope your best years are ahead of you. Congratulations, hey, and thank you very much. Comment. Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Mr. Spahn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board. Thank you for the indulgence. I just wanted to make an observation. The first opportunity that I had to meet Lieutenant Weller was in the Emergency Operations Center during the wildfires uh, last uh, summer. And I just uh, can't compliment you enough for your poise, for your diligence, for your supervision of the law enforcement activities that were executed so effectively. So may I compliment you and wish you all the very best. Congratulations again, John. Um, next, we're going to move on to uh, item number three on our agenda, and that is a presentation given by Samantha Ferrero regarding the Tulare County Step Up Program. Sam. Okay. Good morning, Chairman Vanderpool, members of the board, Mr. Spada, and Ms. Peterson. Samantha Ferrero, board representative here before you this morning to provide a brief program update and overview of the Step Up program. Seeing as we have two new supervisors to the board and myself being new to coordinating the program, I thought it would be appropriate to provide an overview of what Step Up does throughout the county, including um, the programs that are going on in each of your districts. I'll start with a brief history. So back in 2006, 2007, it was undeniable that Tulare County had a problem with gangs and gang violence, gang activity countywide. 
So in the spring of 2007, a group of individuals from various sectors in the community got together to form the Tulare County Gang Prevention Task Force. This task force was made up of folks from law enforcement, elected officials, uh, local government, faith-based organizations, nonprofit organizations, et cetera, to come together and brainstorm solutions to this problem. From those discussions, two tactics emerged. The first was the need for an aggressive educational and awareness campaign. And the second was to provide actual opportunities for youth, especially those at risk, to get involved in something meaningful to create positive contributions to their communities. As these activities began to take place, the brand of the name Step Up with the slogan Be Part of the Solution started to come about and was used to brand all events um, under this anti-gang umbrella that were happening countywide to unify all county efforts. In 2009, an ad hoc executive committee was created to provide governance to the Tulare County Gang Prevention Task Force. And in 2015, that executive committee, um, after brainstorming, came up with a strategic plan to not only provide governance and organization to the Step Up program, but also to uh, formalize and ensure that the, the future of the program would be successful. Additionally, in 2015, the executive committee was formalized, and so now we see um, a supervisor on that uh, committee, and it's a formalized county committee at this time. So now I'll go over a brief introduction of all the different programs and partnerships. Step Up has many partnerships and programs that exist currently. Uh, one of the original programs that has been in existence since about 2009 is the Youth Challenge. The Youth Challenge is a reverse grant program that engages uh, youth countywide in middle schools and in high schools. It begins uh, in about October with schools and their advisors coming to the Visalia Convention Center for the kickoff event, the, um, the challenge kickoff event. Uh, the youth that get together, they start brainstorming how they can create a project for their communities. Um, it's a service learning project. Those pro uh, youth and their teams, they come back together in April and those programs are evaluated and they're awarded. They um, have a red carpet celebration event in May to celebrate all their hard work and to celebrate their achievements. This program is, has been very successful and fosters civic engagement and getting youth involved in the community. The hashtag lead program has been around since about 2013 and is both a program and a partnership between the Board of Supervisors Step Up, HHSA, and CSET. LEAD stands for Leading, Educating, Advocating, and Developing, and it's a youth mentorship program. We work with HHSA to incorporate youth that are in the foster care system and cash aid kids, and also incorporate kids from um, the schools to get together. There is a service learning project component to this program. Currently, the LEAD program has three cohorts, one in Visalia, one in Tulare, and one in Porterville. The Summer Night Lights program has been around since about 2011, and it's based on a City of Los Angeles program. Based on the idea that crime takes place, crime spikes during the summer months when youth are out of school, and it Step Up works with communities and community-based organizations to fund events that take place during the summer. So there's between six to eight events in each community, and they can also have two additional swim nights where we'll sponsor an, a night at the pool for the kids to go and escape the summer heat. We also work with law enforcement to engage them with the youth so that they have positive interactions with their law enforcement officers. Excuse me. The Lupus has been around for a while, since about 2008, and it's a service that is funded by Measure R and the Board of Supervisors to provide transportation for youth to different various community activities. This idea came about that in the beginnings of Step Up, youth were afraid to walk in their communities due to the gang activity and the gang violence. So the Loop Bus solved that problem by providing transportation to organizations that serve youth and transporting them to activities that are free for them, uh, for them to engage in their communities. Community resource fairs have been around since the beginning of the Step Up program, since about 2008. Step Up works with Family Healthcare Network and other various partners to provide resource fairs to the communities. It allows for organizations and service, services in those communities to connect with the folks that live there and so that they're connected to their services. And lastly, the Youth Commission and Youth Activities Grant. 
The Youth Commission was instituted in 2008, and the Youth Activities Grant um, was the first grant application period was in 2009. The commission is an advisory board to your board. They review these grant applications and make recommendations for funding. There's a, a pot of $100,000 that's broken up into the five districts, and each district has $20,000 to award to uh, nonprofit organizations that are providing activities and opportunities for engagement for youths in those districts. Here's a graph showing the involvement of um, in the step up program year by year since 2007 all the way up in 2016. And what I would like to add is that, you know, it did start off slow, but a lot of what staff was doing in the beginning of the program was community building and really getting that step up brand into the community. And as you can see, it, it has certainly taken off since about 2011 and up. In the first couple of years, it was a lot of the resource fairs in the community and, and connecting folks with their services. And then the youth. You know, the, the lead program and the summer night light started to engage a lot more youth, and so you'll see the, the graph going up. So now I'll just highlight a few of the different step-up activities that are going on in each of your districts. So we'll start with District 1. The youth challenge is very well represented in District 1 with Kennedy Middle School, Reagan Middle School, and Strathmore Middle School, Washington Middle School, Wilson Middle School, lots of middle schools, and Valley Oak and Eleanor Roosevelt, which is a high school, are all engaged and um, participating currently in the Youth Challenge. Three organizations were awarded Youth Activities Grant in District 1, Sequoia Parks Conservancy, El Quinto Sol de America, and Harmony Magnet Academy. We have a resource fair coming up in District 1 at Strathmore Middle School on March 30th. And then also Summer Night Lights takes place pretty consistently in District 1 in the communities of Exeter, Lindsay, and Strathmore. And this event would not be possible without the partnerships in those communities. For example, Strathmore and Exeter Boys and Girls Club and the City of Lindsay. We work very closely with our partners to make these events successful. In District 2, you also have a lot of schools participating in the Youth Challenge. Palo Verde Middle School, Pixley Middle School, Accelerated Charter, Mission Oak, Tech Prep, Pleasant View Middle School. The Youth Activities Grant, or the Youth Commission awarded two grants to the youth, Tulare Athletic Boxing Club and to Grandma's House. You also have a hashtag lead cohort in your district. And then Summer Night Lights, uh, communities participating, Alpaw and Allensworth. And what's interesting this year is before they would combine their events to get, uh, but they have been so successful, successful, excuse me, this year that they're splitting off because the participation is so high in both of those communities. Early Mart, Pixley, Tipton, and Tulare also participate. In District 3, the Youth Challenge is alive and well. Divisadero, Green Acres, La Jolla, and Ridgeview Middle Schools, Valley Life Charter School, Mount Whitney <coughs> High School, University Prep are all participating this year in the Youth Challenge. Proteus and Act for Women and Girls are two nonprofits that were awarded the Youth Activities Grant this year. District 3 also has the hashtag lead cohort. And Summer Night Lights, the City of Visalia and Proteus, along with Visalia PD and the Whitman Center, all worked together to create a successful Summer Night Lights event. District 4 has certainly a lot going on in the Step Up world. Youth Challenge um, has Washington Intermediate, Woodlake Valley Middle School, Munson Sultana, which is the new school participating this year in the challenge, El Monte Middle School, and Arosi High School. Photo Kids and AYSO Goshen were awarded the Youth Activities Grant this year. Lots of community resource fairs. Um, one note that I have noticed in working with Step Up in District 4 is maybe because of the, the high levels of the gang activity in that community, the nonprofits and community-based organizations are very engaged in District 4, which is why you'll see the four community resource fairs taking place. Goshen on May 11th, Ivanhoe April 27th, Cutler Arosi April 24th, and Woodlake on May 5th. Dinuba, Cutler Arosi, and Woodlake all participate in Summer Night Lights. And then there's two other partnerships that I would like to highlight in District 4, the first being the Young Men's Initiative, which is a, an organization that is relatively new um, and started because the, or, the executive director was seeing a lot of young men in that community that were lacking positive role models and father figures. Um, so this organization seeks to correct that and provide leadership and opportunities for young men to engage in service. And they hosted their first conference event this February, and so Step Up partnered with them there, as well as many of our um, HHSA partners. The second is the Rise Above Project, and that is in its second year. We work with many of our partners at Health and Human Services, 
um, as well as El Monte Middle School and Munson Sultana School to um, put this project together, Step Up Help Sponsor. And it is an organization, for, or it's an event for sixth graders to come together uh, to talk about drug and alcohol use. And it's a, a very interesting event that has a series of vignettes that the sixth graders go through. So it starts off by showing them, you know, peer pressure situation, a student chooses to use drugs and it takes them through what it's like being arrested and going to court and going through probation. Um, so we utilize a lot of county partners in this event to make it as realistic as possible. The Rise Above project had also been previously in Lindsay, so it's represented in District 1 as well. Lastly, District 5. Step Up Porterville Supervisor, as you know, is, is alive and well. What's unique about District 5 is uh, Step Up has really kind of taken off there and they've created their own cohort, uh, if you can say, with a lot of local organizations in Porterville to create events tailored to the residents of Porterville. The hashtag lead is also in Porterville this year. It's their second year of having a cohort there. The Youth Challenge has participants from Bartlett Middle School, Burton Middle School and High School, <coughs> Pioneer Middle School and Summit Charter High School. The Youth Activities Grant was awarded to Imagine Community Arts Center and Sea Wild Places this year. And Porterville and City of Porterville and Ducor participate in our Summer Night Lights program. But that was just a, a brief taste about the Step Up program. I'm more than happy to take questions or comments or questions or comments from my colleagues. Supervisor Worthy. Mr. John, I just want to say, Sam, thank you for that presentation. And I also appreciate Sam's uh, stepping into this uh, new role for her. And it's always new when, when new people come in and look at something and it causes us to sort of reevaluate how we've been doing things, what's effective, what's not as effective, are we doing it in an equitable, fair way. I just appreciate the opportunity to, to she's asked for input from uh, supervisors and been very responsive to our responses. So thank you. And, and thank you uh, for you're your doing a great job. Thanks. Supervisor Ennis. Like your presentation, uh, Samantha, I knew you'd do a good job. Uh, one of the other things that I'd like to highlight about, highlight about Porterville is our, our uh, poster contest, which we do every year. And it's uh, the grade schools, high school. Uh, the kids all come up with posters, and they have a theme on gangs, and they design some kind of a poster. And so then the winning poster gets put on one of our transit buses and right on the side of it and stays there all year long until the next program comes around. So kids are pretty proud of that. You get your poster on that bus. That's Plus they got the $250 cash too. So <laughs> great little contest Thank we do you. every year and uh, kids sure get a lot out of it and get a lot of, a lot of kids uh, uh, doing posters. So it's, it's great for the community. Thank you. Supervisor Crocker, did you want to? Uh, I just um, <clears throat> comment. Thank you. I, I thought it was a great, um, for myself, not being not being as familiar, except with the, some of the Strathmore activities, this was very good. Uh, I, I just, if we're, I, I don't know if this is a question or just a comment, but um, are, do we coordinate with the Office of Education, the County Office of Ed, with any of the partnerships or and or the library? Because I know they have some... Um, summer after, after school type activity? Sure, that's a great question. TICO is a, a huge partner in a lot of our events. Um, they have a position on our um, the executive committee for Step Up as well as they're uh, in our challenge committee. So they work very closely with us in the challenge and that event wouldn't be possible without our TICO partners. Um, the second question is in years past with the libraries, we've partnered with them a lot. It's not a program that's currently happening, but it's, it's called the Art Tour. So we had partnered with the Urbanist Collective and the Arts Consortium in one of their events in the fall, and I believe it's youth that create these posters. And pre in previous years, they have gone on art tour. So throughout the county, they were displayed at county, at county library locations. All right. Supervisor Shuckling. Yeah, Sam, yeah. do you have a, a budget amount that, that all this is put together with? The step up budget, because a lot of our programs and our partnerships are, are funding partnerships, um, the budget currently is at about, let's see, I have it right here. Let's see. About 350000 and that's for all those programs. That, that is you for all those programs, correct? So we fund, um, you know, a lot of our partnership events, and then also the youth challenge, um, because a lot of, you know, the step up is 
the brand is out in the community so much, we are getting a lot of requests for partnerships is, is how we're kind of growing in the future now. Um, and the best way that we've been able to figure out how to partner is providing sponsorship opportunities to allow these events to flourish, especially in the rural communities that don't necessarily have the, that funding to get these events off the ground. And then with the hashtag lead program, it's in Porterville, Tulare, and Visalia. Is there um, any talk about moving that maybe also north to the Dinuba, Cutler, or Rossi area, and what would that cost be? Correct. So in looking at um, our map of the LEAD program, District 4 is, is lacking that, um, that LEAD program. Um, it's currently represented in Visalia, Tulare, and Porterville. Um, we have been slowly expanding, and we have been working with our partners, HHSA and CSET, to discuss expanding. So, you know, we've been in recent communications with them because HHSA does support us um, with some of the youth that are engaged in the community. Um, so to, to get the LEAD program off the ground in uh, Dinuba, it would cost about 75000 A year. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. those are the only questions I have. The comment that I have is kind of off of what um, Supervisor Worthley said. I being new and Sam being somewhat new, <laughs> we inherited this, this program. It's an incredible program and it does a, a great service to the community. Um, but, but Sam took over from somebody who had been doing this, a full it was a full-time position in Step Up. And as everybody knows, uh, Supervisor Cox's passion for this was outstanding and so it the two of them really made this, this happen, and now for two new of us coming in. Uh, but Sam has done an outstanding job at putting the pieces of this puzzle together and, uh, and reaching out to the partners and, and being out there and really finding out what's going on so that we can continue it. And also, as Steve said, we're working on fine-tuning it and so we can make it more efficient for the programming and also more efficient fiscally. So I appreciate that. Uh, all the work that you've been doing on it and Julieta, you too, we've all been kind of figuring it all out <laughs> and we're, we're getting there and we're, doing, we're gonna do a good job with thank it. You. So thank you very much. Thank you. It's very, you if I could just add, it's yeah. very inspiring to go out in these communities and see the great thing that is being done is. on behalf of the board. So lots of great things coming up. And, and just to echo uh, Supervisor Shuckling's comments, I, I think it's really uh, outstanding that you uh, and Amy too have taken this program uh, that you didn't start, you didn't run, um, but you took this program and you're, you're shaping it the way that you see it can be most effective in our communities uh, and, and make the most difference from your perspective. Uh, everybody sees the world uh, through a different set of eyes and I'm sure glad that you guys are taking this forward. Um, I know that it has a tremendous impact countywide. We can see the growth uh, in each district I remember in, uh, in, in Tulare, it was uh, when I first got on the board. Mm -hmm. no, they didn't want anything to do with the Step Up program. So we had to do uh, Tulare uh, Gang Awareness Summits. Um, and eventually, the Step Up brand was, was welcomed in the com into the community uh, and has really taken off. And, and not only in the city of Tulare, but we've expanded into the unincorporated communities as well and done a fantastic job there. I mean, for a community like Alpaw and Allensworth, yeah. who have always combined their events to have uh, relevant enough sizes to have their own program, I think that's fantastic. And it just shows that Step Up has really morphed into something on its own uh, that is having a major impact in our, in our communities. And it is achieving its goal uh, of providing youth with alternatives to uh, the gang lifestyle that... Uh, uh, they might have seen as their only option, uh, absent step up. So uh, great job, great work, Thank and you, I appreciate the uh, passion that uh, you and Supervisor Shuckley and, and really all of our staff have had for this program. So. Thank you very much. Mr. Spada. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, board members. Uh, first off, uh, thank you, Samantha. Excellent presentation, and in particular, thank you for the review and highlight of all the activities that have been distributed throughout the districts uh, within this county. In addition, I would like to thank uh, Supervisor Sheckling. We have had several very good discussions in looking forward how we can really accelerate this program. And with the board's uh, authorization as we move towards uh, budget season, uh, this office will continue to provide strategic budgetary support that will affect all the districts. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. Thank Any you. further questions or comments? Questions or comments from members of the public? Okay, seeing none, uh, we will move on. Thank you very much, Sam. Great Thank presentation. You, Sam. Thank you. All right, next we're going to move on to item number four on our agenda, and that is a request to adopt a resolution proclaiming March 2017 as Social Work Month in Tulare County. Thank you. Good morning, Chairman Vanderpool, members of the board, Mr. Spada and Council. My name is Anita Ortiz, and I'm the Deputy Director for Child Welfare Services. So on behalf of HHSA, I'm honored to be here this morning um, in front of all of you so that we can come together and recognize the great work that our social workers do here in our county. Every day they strive to provide the best services to the elderly, children, families, adults, and our pregnant and parenting teens. This year's theme is Social Workers Stand Up, and I have no doubt that every day in our county our social workers stand up for those in need. And at this time, I'd like to invite them to join me at the podium. You guys would stand up. <laughs> Today, we have social workers for multiple departments, um, one being child welfare services, mental health, aging, and public health. And I just want to thank all of you for um, being willing to recognize their efforts and their dedication to the multiple communities in our county. So at this time, I'd like to ask everyone to join me in offering them a round of applause. Very well said, uh, Anita, and it really is an honor to uh, present this proclamation here to you today. So often what you do is not recognized and uh, seems underappreciated, but uh, that standing ovation clearly shows that uh, uh, members of this board and members of the audience do realize the impact that you have on all of our lives uh, and making this community a better place. So uh, it is my pleasure to be here and present uh, this proclamation on behalf of this Board of Supervisors uh, proclaiming March 2017 as Social Work Month in Tulare County. Whereas March is National Social Work Month with an official theme of social workers stand up for 2017. And whereas nearly 230 social workers are employed by Tulare County. And whereas every day in communities throughout Tulare County, social workers tirelessly guide individuals and families through life's complexities Programs and services provided by social workers are essential elements for essential elements of the Tulare County's social safety net. And whereas the primary mission of social work is to enhance human well-being and help meet the basic needs of all people, especially the most vulnerable. And whereas social workers make a critical impact in adolescent and youth development, aging and family caregiving, child protection and family services, health care navigation, mental and behavioral health treatment, military and veterans assistance, community development, and poverty reduction, and whereas social workers seek to improve social functioning and social conditions for people in emotional, psychological, economic, and or physical need. They believe that the, the county's strength depends on the ability of its citizens to lead productive and healthy lives. And whereas social workers help people who are often navigating major life challenges, find hope and new options for achieving their maximum potential. And the dedication and sacrifices of social workers deserve recognition because the work they do is critical to the progress of our society. And now therefore be it proclaimed the Tulare County Board of Supervisors do hereby proclaim the month of March as Social Work Month in Tulare County and call upon the citizens, public and private institutions, businesses, and schools in Tulare County to show their appreciation for the tremendous contributions of social workers <coughs> that make the county a better place for all of its residents. Signed by Kyler Crocker. He takes up a lot of room with his signature. You know, it's like <laughs> maybe makes up for that short stature with a big signature. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, Pete <laughs> Vanderpool, <laughs> Amy Shuckley, Steve Worthley, and Mike Ennis. It's my pleasure to present this proclamation to you this morning. Please join me in the well.
my chair. Now you're tripping over there. It's just you. Photo bomb. He's gonna blame everybody but himself. That's right, that's right. <laughs> this is an action item. Yeah. Sure, I move approval. Second. We have a motion by Supervisor Wordley, a second by Supervisor Ennis. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you again for coming today and being recognized. We appreciate the work that you do. Uh, next, we're going to move on to uh, take up our consent calendar real oh, pub quick. Public comments? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Woo! That's a big one. Missed that one. Number five, uh, public comments. At this time, members of the public are invited to comment to the board on any item not appearing on today's agenda. Is there anybody here wishing to speak under public comment? Okay, seeing none, I will close the public comment period and I will bring it back to the board uh, to move on to the consent calendar. Thank you, Supervisor Wordley, for catching that. Um, items 7 through 20. Item 7, we have one correction. Uh, we will not be appointing uh, the uh, name Jacqueline Leone. Uh, she does not meet the act, actual qualifications for the position. Um, but uh, absent that correction, the chair will entertain any other items to be removed or corrected. Items or, or a calendar? motion. I'd like to pull item 13. Okay, item 13 will be pulled. Um, and uh, any additional comments or questions from board members or members of the public? Okay, I'd chair will entertain a motion. Of the approval balance of the uh, consent Second. calendar. As amended. As amended. Mike, as amended. Second. Okay, we have a motion by Supervisor Ennis, a second by Supervisor Shuckling. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, now we'll move on to item number 13. Yes, John Hess, Deputy CEO, General Services, Capital Projects. Happy to answer any questions on the Cigna lease. So, John, with, with, the, with Cigna wanting to add this space, is that going to include additional jobs then if they're going to be – adding to their call center? Yes, very good question. We've been told by their uh, their agents that they're going to be adding 100 jobs to the facility by virtue wow. of this additional space. That was my only question. Just wanted that for the record. Since you brought up the yeah. I was going to ask. Uh, there, I did know, so we were looking to try to extend the contract, the length of the term, but apparently that, that, that was not successful, as I understand it. Correct. We went with a couple different options to Cigna for the various different um, terms that we would like to see, and they chose to do a higher rate with their existing termination date in place. Okay. Okay, any further questions or comments, members of the public? Okay, seeing none, Chair will entertain a motion. Move approval. Motion by Supervisor Shuckling. Second. Second by Supervisor Crocker, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Sure, uh, oftentimes we use the expression, the gift that keeps on giving in a very negative kind of a way. Yeah. But, but this is the gift that keeps on giving in a very positive way. Yeah, so sure as is. we look at the revenue coming into the county from the, the, the facility, Yes, increased revenue is just a, that much of an assistance to us. So, it's great. absolutely. All right, we will now move on to item number six, which is a 9:30 timed item. Uh, that is a public hearing, a request from the Resource Management Agency to hold a public hearing to certify that the board has reviewed and considered the information contained in the. Go ahead. I'll read the whole agenda item if you keep going. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman uh, Vander Bruin, uh, <laughs> oh my Supervisors, God. Mr. CAO, <laughs> County Council. Mike Washam, uh, Economic Development and Planning Director for the RMA. Today for your consideration is the Thule River Indian Housing Authority's uh, PUD, which is a plan unit development uh, and mitigated negative declaration. The location is in East Porterville, uh, as identified by the map, and you can see the aerial. The uh, site is on the south side of Springville Avenue, a little bit east of Sunset. And you can see the, the site extends down to and beyond the river. The uh, development part will be on the north side of the, uh, prod, uh, of the site, uh, out, outside of the flood zone. The PUD, um, uh, the zoning of the site is uh, RMA, uh, F1 and AE20. AE20 is that part south of the river, and then the flood zone is, is that part within the flooding area. Again, the project is outside of those boundaries. Uh, the reason we're coming forward with a PUD is because uh, uh, 
single family residences are allowed in that zone, but, but uh, to have a number of them on one parcel requires uh, this uh, uh, planned unit development. The project's located within the Porterville Area Community Plan, which your board uh, adopted about two years ago, complying with about 38 policies and goals of the Tulare County General Plan, things such as cluster development, uh, meets objectives of the housing element. Uh, all of those things are, are in, involved in, in this type of infill de development. Land use designation is low residential, uh, low density residential, which is defined as six units per acre. This project is, is using a density uh, of 4.5 units per acre, so it's, it's falling in still that low density because of the size of uh, the overall project. The southern portion, again, as I mentioned, is adjacent to the river and within the F1 and the AE20 zone, and on the site plan, that is designated as open space. The site will consist of, uh, we'll have 54 off-site, off off-street parking spaces. That would be two units per, per, or two cars per unit. In addition, there's going to be 27 single, uh, single car garages, one for every house. Uh, multifamily uh, residential developments require 40% of the net area be devoted to landscaping. This project will be consistent with the state model water efficiency landscape ordinance. Uh, a water sustainability study was required as part of this project. The well has been tested on the site and the city will provide water when and if at the time of annexation. This is a, uh, a site plan. Uh, I apologize, it's often difficult to uh, show scale on, on an overhead like this, but the development is laid out uh, in such a manner that the garages are, are along that uh, the drive approach and then there's a loop uh, uh, traffic circulation within the development itself. Uh, all of the setbacks, distances, heights of structures, all the development standards are within the, um, within the resolutions of the Planning Commission and as, as designed on the site plan. This is a landscape plan and again it, it meets with the uh, requirements of the state model water efficiency landscaping uh, ordinance. Here's a, I apologize again for the scanning, but uh, what the typical house will look like and the floor plan, these are about a little under 1,400 square feet. <clears throat> the notice of availability for the uh, initial study and mitigated neg de declaration was published in the Visalia Times Delta and the Porterville Recorder, mailed to the surrounding property owners for a 30 day review. This occurred last January, January of 2016 for a 30 day review. It was also posted on the county's website. Hard copies were available at the Resource Management Agency, and they were also uh, located at the uh, Springville branch of the, uh, the county library system. Out of all of that, we received two comment letters. Uh, one was received by the city of Porterville, and one was received from the Central Valley Flood Protection Board back in February of uh, 2016. The responses to comments and mitigation measures were uh, incorporated into the project and conditions of approval. Basically, the Central Valley Flood Protection Board uh, was just notifying that there's a flood channel there and that uh, basically our response was that everything's within 50 foot setback of the flood zone. So nothing is being proposed or developed within the flooding area. And uh, the city of uh, Porterville had some comments as well. <clears throat> Furthermore, uh, two separate notices of public hearing were published according to law, one for the Planning Commission, which was held back in January, uh, and uh, as well mailed to all the citizens, and then again to uh, today's meeting was also published and notified to the surrounding property owners. Uh, the only comments letters we received were those two throughout the whole process. Planning Commission, there was no public testimony other than um, from the applicant and uh, the city of Porterville stood in support of the project. With, with Porterville in mind, there is an extensive collaboration between the city of Porterville, the Tule River Indian Housing Authority, as well as the county staff and county representatives. We continued that throughout 2016. There's multiple uh, phone calls, meetings, uh, in person and written correspondence. These discussions culminated in late October with a letter from the city outlining some requirements that they would like to see when the project is connected to the water system of the city. Uh, 
we went over those uh, conditions with the, the uh, housing authority and they've agreed to all of the terms and conditions that the city was requesting. As such, those requests, those were turned into conditions of approval which are included in the uh, Planning Commission's resolutions of approval and will be conditions uh, for this project going forward. <clears throat> so that really concludes staff's report. Uh, uh, we'd like you to consider the, uh, the mitigating egg deck find that there's no substantial evidence that the uh, plan unit development will have a significant effect on the, on the environment, adopt the mitigated negative deck and mitigation monitoring program, and direct the uh, RMA uh, environmental assessment officer to uh, file a notice of determination, and adopt the findings of approval as set forth by the planning commission resolutions number 9259 and 9260, and approve the plan unit development. All right, thank you very much. Are there any questions uh, from board members at this time? No questions, just a comment that this is much needed. Uh, you know, the Housing Authority has been working on this for some time, and we kind of knew this was coming, but we didn't know when. But much needed, much needed housing for the folks at the Indian Reservation. All right. This is a public hearing. Uh, at this time, I will open the public hearing. Anybody wishing to comment on this item? Please come forward, state your name and address. Good morning, members of the board. Mr. Chairman, I'm Jim Winton. My business address is 150 West Morton. Um, I'm here on behalf of the uh, Tui River Housing Authority on this project. Uh, we've, we've spent, or it, is, it has taken a, a considerable amount of time to process this project. Uh, primarily, um, it was complicated with the East Porterville situation drought which took a lot of extra time and effort and we thank the staff for hanging in there with us on the project um, Ray De Perry, the executive director of the housing authority and a few of the board members are also here today I don't have or didn't prepare a detailed presentation as the staff report for the Planning Commission is, is uh, complete. I really didn't have anything to add or complain about as the uh, staff indicated we're in agreement with the conditions of approval. I will try to answer any uh, detailed questions that you might have. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the uh, uh, Tulare County Board of Supervisors, my name is Ray DePerry. I am the Executive Director for the uh, Tule River Indian Housing Authority. When I took the position as Executive Director for the uh, Tule River Housing Authority uh, five years ago, we have a waiting list of well over 250 families that have been on a waiting list for some affordable housing. Since that time, I am not aware of anyone coming in and adding to that waiting list, but we know for a fact that there are more than the recorded 250 families. The need for housing, affordable housing, adequate housing, safe housing, is tantamount to the well-being of the community. Unfortunately, it's difficult for us to pursue any such building up on the reservation itself, given the terrain, uh, the uh, uh, lack of infrastructure, etc. This particular site in Springville, the tribe slash housing authority have had, has had for a number of years. It is just now within the last few years that we have began to focus on that particular area to get it to this point where we could hopefully pursue it to the extent of providing the affordable housing that is needed. So this was a rather um, very 
learned process for all of us, the housing board, the housing authority. Um, Normally, as you very well know, this is not the protocol for tribal entities as such. And I want to uh, compliment uh, the York County staff people who have assisted us and helped guiding us through so we could be at this point today. And we are looking forward to your support so we may continue that effort. Thank you very much. Thank you. If you have any, any additional questions. public comments. I, I just received the letter. They, uh, in my property, in part of my property. So I want, I had a question if he, they pretend to buy or just take it or I don't know. And how do you, how do you value the acre or I don't know. It's, I'm just asking. There's no, I don't know. Nobody contact me and. Uh, my, I would speak with uh, Mr. Washam. Uh, he is the chief planner. Our director of planning. Mm-hmm. So you'd like to see if yeah, you'd like to see if they could buy that land from you. Yeah. That you okay, we'll talk. We'll talk separately. It's looking at a purchase of some other land. Oh, okay. Thank right. you. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Any additional questions or comments? All right. Seeing none, uh, we'll close the public hearing. Bring it back to the board for action. Mr. Chairman, I, before we do take action, I, I wanted to say I think this is an exceptionally great project. It's an infill project. It creates densities. It also helps to, uh, when we look going forward, uh, the, having, the, having the requisite population to be able to provide services is going to be a critical aspect of, of, in all of our unincorporated communities. And I, I'm very, I know when we had met with the tribe, uh, tribal leaders sometime back, this was an area of, of concern. Because uh, at that point, they felt like they had been unable to move forward. And, uh, and it's great to be here today. And I think this project uh, may have morphed a little bit. Because I think my recollection was they were talking about just some individual housing. But this is a much more dense, uh, dense project. And uh, again, so those densities are really helpful when it comes to being able to bring the cost of services down. So uh, I'm very happy that we're here today and uh, very supportive of the project. Okay. Chair will entertain a motion if there's no further comments. I have Go ahead. Question, I, um, maybe for uh, staff. Uh, the, the, there was a talk or mention about uh, annexation with the city. Is that is that just uh, if, or is there a, a path for that? Well, there uh, the path will eventually it will get there. They're not there yet. The discussion was uh, about water connection again. The the this this process was extended because of the situation there in East Porterville. <clears throat> the, um, the state's program that is hooking up East Porterville, ideally this would be all hooked up to the East Porterville, uh, water, the water system of the city of Porterville. However, the grant is structured in that it's not for new development. The city would not allow them to connect at this time to that water system. Therefore, they're going to go with the existing well and there might be a secondary well put on too. Uh, and then at that time that they're able to hook up and that time that the city is ready to start annexing out in that area. The property is, is adjacent on the south side back down by Highway 190. That is city, uh, city limit. So the, the, it does abut city limit property. And that's what took the extended uh, collaboration with the city. It's kind of back and forth. It was like, is the city going to process it? Then it came back to the county. So that's what extended the time frame on processing. But ultimately... Um, it's not connecting now. It's not available to connect to that state grant at this time, but in the future and at such time that it's possible to, that process will go forward. Okay. Yeah, I think you're looking at quite a few years down the road before you see any of that annexed out there, even the people that are in the sphere of where the deal is now. But saying that, I would move for approval. All right. We have a motion from second. Supervisor Annis, a second by Supervisor Wordley. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And Michael, before you leave, Mike, Mike, Mike wanted to make a comment too, real quick. Is that all right, Mr. Sure, Wordley? Okay, just very briefly, I just wanted to thank Mr. Washam, the Resource Management Agency, the Economic Development Planning Branch, the Project Review Division, as well as County Council. There were some very complex environmental issues 
The city manager contacted me last year with some concerns. I just want to compliment all of you for successfully resolving these issues and for, again, promoting intergovernmental cooperation and good relations with the cities as well as the tribe. Thank you and well done. Okay, and then go ahead. Intergovernmental yeah. International. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just going back to the issue brought by, by Mr. Crocker. Um, even though they can't hook up, the infrastructure is there for them to do that at a future point in time? Or is it, that it will be. I don't know the capacity. Well, there's no capacity at this time, but I don't know the extent of the process, uh, where they are, but certainly the main lines will be going down Springville Avenue. Uh, I, I don't know whether, where, where they're at currently in that process. Right. The, the, the board is, the water board is, uh, on April 4th is, is finalizing the funding for phase two of that project. So once that's funding available and, and, and the uh, main line is extended out, I don't know what the time frame is on that. The other comment was going to be that um, um, unlike many places where annexation would require a host of other property owners to become involved, this would be one if they are adjacent to the city limits, they could on their own be an issue, on own initiative and would the city actually annex themselves into the city. It doesn't require other property owners to accomplish that. Most certainly, and that's that's part of the discussion that we had previous, but but they didn't have the ability to hook up the water at this time. That was why they it was a grant forward. situation. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, any further questions or comments? Are there going to be any water issues that you foresee in the future, like with East Porterville? Well, <laughs> are there water? There are water issues, there are continuing water issues that we're trying to resolve to the best of uh, our abilities. Uh, certainly, the, the latest storms have helped that because those are shallow uh, sandpoint type of wells that a lot of recovery going on out there. But the, the hookups are really going fast and furious out there. I, I believe we're over 300 now, and then as the, the state approves that next phase, there's going to be another, I think, approximately 600 homes hooked up under that. So, so as this goes out, having uh, connections to municipal systems are, are really the solution. Thank you. I, I can just make one comment too on that. Sure. Area. Anybody in East Porterville that has a legitimate well, I'm talking a well, not a standpoint, have, have gone through this drought without any problem. Yeah. Okay. Oh, lack of water is just getting down to it. Okay. okay. Any further questions or comments? We already voted, guys, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Exactly this item today. is concluded. We will now move on to uh, the next item on our agenda, and that is our untimed item. Uh, Number 21. 21, and that is uh, regarding, uh, it's a presentation from General Services uh, regarding the property and evidence facility. Oh, All right. <clears throat> Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Mr. Spada, Ms. Peterson, John Hess, Deputy CAO, General Services and Capital Projects. So we're going to give a brief presentation regarding the property and evidence relocation project, specifically the Vanner Architect Services contract. So the project was approved by the board in uh, August of last year. $3.3 million in the current year's capital improvement program has been programmed for this project. The current facility, as uh, the board is aware, is uh, very, very poor condition, outdated, undersized for the, the, the needs of the sheriff's department. So looking at the new construction, what we have is two different items. First is the construction of a new storage facility, essentially a warehouse uh, facility, at approximately 8,000 square feet. That number uh, will likely change as we proceed. And then second, the renovation of an existing building for the crime lab, which is a building that already exists, been there for a long time, pretty good condition, doing some interior remodels to make it uh, uh, up to speed or state of the art for the purpose of the sheriff's office. So the delivery methodology is what's called design build. This is a different methodology than the traditional methodology of design bid build. As you can see, it removes that bidding period out, which is about a three to four month process. It's a fast track model of construction, usually reserved for larger construction projects. This is on the kind of smaller to medium size uh, construction projects. So this is right on, that, right on that threshold. What it does is it moves right from design into construction. Without going into the public procurement process, we bring a design build entity in. They put the bridging documents together, and then we move into construction. So with the timeline, that means we would do the design and bridging document up first then work with the design build entity to finish up design and then move it to construction. So we're looking at early next year for completion. This is a rendering provided by the sheriff's office for the building renovation of the existing building and this is something that Banner has already looked at and already made some modifications to there. You know, this is already being uh, further refined as we speak. Similar with this building, this is an initial rendering of the new construction building on the outside which would be immediately adjacent to the building we just saw also an initial draft rendering for the building. 
So the request for qualifications that we did to obtain architect services for this project were released in November of last year. We received two responses to that, and we provided those responses to the board back in December. We initiated negotiations with the top firm at that time and were unable to find mutual terms with that uh, consultant. In thereafter, we began negotiations with the second consultant, Vanner, and came to terms uh, in February. So here are the terms that Vanner has put forth in five phases, a total of $275,420. And uh, so first phase is pre-design. Second phase is the de development of the bridging documents. Essentially, the, um, the primary design entity would happen there. Third is design build selection, procuring the design build entity. Fourth would finish up design simultaneously with beginning certain elements of site preparation, clearing, grubbing, those sorts of things, and then moving into formal construction. If you'll notice on uh, phase three, we are recommending the inclusion of an optional project management task at $25,000 already included in that $35,000 figure. So with that, that concludes my presentation. Request approval of the agreement with Vanner for design build services for the Providence Evidence Project, not to exceed $275,420, retroactive to February 27th, which is the day we came to terms with their scope included here. And be happy to answer any questions or entertain comments. Any questions or comments from board members? Supervisor Thank Worsley. Thank you. Uh, I, I thought that when you had a design build uh, type of project, you actually, at the beginning, had some concept of what the maximum amount would be at the end. Yes, so we, you do have to define up front the scope and the parameters and before you go to procurement. So in the next six to eight weeks, we have to have that, that amount nailed down before we get that procurement entity, that design build entity on hand. So you'll come back to the board then for permission to accept that, those parameters? Correct. That, that has to go back out for a public procurement, so we would come back to the board for that approval and that request and any sort of uh, money modifications that the project may need at that time. What is the funding source for these funds? John? This is local. This is all county funds, Millennium Fund, and so forth. And yet, capital projects budget. Yes, yes, it's, with, it's programmed. It was, within I, just, but I didn't know whether there was a special special source of revenue for this, or whether it was primarily out of our sheriff's department budget. I know, well, because I, I know, I know our annual amount from the Millennium Fund is. is Two and a half million, I think, or something like that. Or we we uh, withdrew three and a half million this year, and I think three the year before. And so we've had some money set aside over the last two or three years for this project. It's actually been programmed, I believe, the last two years. And so the money, the three point three, is on in the capital projects fund funded at this time. Great, thank you. Anybody have any additional questions, Supervisor Crocker? Uh, I I'm just curious to see uh, if anyone from the sheriff's department would like to comment uh, to see if, whether or not the proposal uh, meets the needs of the of the department and if it's adequate. Mr. Sigley, don't hesitate. Tom doesn't like public speaking. Supervisor Crocker, you'll learn that very soon. <laughs> Boy, grabbed his gun on his way up here. Good morning. Um, as far as this proposal, um, I don't know if you've gotten the updated one, but it's way over this. On the construction budget, yes, that's something that we've been looking at that understood the construction budget. To do both projects will probably require more funding from what Vanner's indicating early on. Correct. So I don't know if this contract is going to change because I think they're under a percentage, correct? They're under the, the flat fee that's presented here would be the flat amount that Vanner would get under, under any circumstance of the project funding. Okay, so I mean, we, we don't have no hiccups with this other than all the proposals that have come forth from Vanner so far are exceeding this as far as... So, if I, so what Captain Sigley is indicating is the early, the early estimates that uh, Vanner is working on in order to accommodate the, the scope that the Sheriff's Department has put together would be more than 3.3 available at this time. So if that comes back in another six to eight weeks at a higher level, that's something we'd have to identify Correct. additional funding for, as we previously discussed. Is there, is there ability to uh, um, sequence this project anyway? We actually discussed that about two weeks ago to see if those two different buildings could be phased, but there's some operational limitations that the sheriff's office has identified. Correct. One, one of the issues with doing these at the same time is our crime lab does the primary evidence collection. So if we move and, and go forward with property and evidence on O Street and don't move crime lab, we're basically going to increase our cost by they'll have to go out to Sequoia Field process 
all the evidence and then turn around and take it all to south of Tulare. Um, but one of the things we're working with uh, county projects is Vanner's original proposal came in at almost 13,000 square feet. So we've got room to get back down to what we talked about. And I guess one of the thought comes to my mind, John, and is that this this doesn't happen tomorrow, so there's the potential of, of augmenting funds from next year's budget if that's necessary to help to, to right. finish up the project, I would think. Because, I mean, we're still at this planning stage, so actual construction, all that takes time. So there might be the opportunity to look at perhaps sequencing it that way from a financing standpoint. Correct. With, with any capital project, especially a project of this size, the intention is always to accommodate the needs of the department over the long term. They're going to be in this, this facility for decades to come, and so we want to make sure that whatever project ultimately materializes accommodates their long-term needs. So rather than uh, spending the time, it's better to spend the time up front designing it and scoping through, making sure it includes, and then if it requires additional funds, perhaps that's something we, we look into, or alternatively looking at phasing or other uh, cost-saving measures along those lines. Any further questions or comments? I just have one just to uh, uh, make some supportive comments for the board. This budget, the property and evidence budget, as well as the larger space planning projects, these budgets are monitored very, very closely uh, in order to ensure that we get the projects done in the most cost-effective manner. But as you know, these are complex projects. Uh, there are a lot of players, and so there may be some additional funding, and I think your, your comment, Supervisor Wardley, is very apt that we may be looking at next budget for further support. But I want to commend Mr. Hess especially that we are watching these budgets very, very closely. With regard to the p and &E facility, there is a clear need for this project, especially in light of the conditions out at Sequoia Field. So time is of the essence. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Sigley, or are we? No, no, we're working good with the board, with uh, John and his team. So, I mean, we're in the pre-planning of this right now. Great. And thanks for coming up with the with the question. Appreciate it. Or Everybody clarification. Move approval. Sure. Uh, anybody have any additional questions? Just, just a comment. I just, um, I I think in the in the packet, the banner um, shows more than than a ample uh, ability to can build a type of facility like this and I, I noted that uh, uh, San Francisco and Los Angeles as well as uh, Santa Rosa all have similar type forensic f facilities and so I was very pleased to see that and so um, with that I have no further comments or questions. Right. Santa Rosa was our model coming here. So uh, Supervisor Worthley was starting down the road of a motion, yes, and uh, Supervisor Shuckling has gone down the road of a second. Um, <laughs> all those in uh, action down the road of voting. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very together. much. On the road. That concludes our regular open session agenda items. Council, do we have need for closed session? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Item A is off the calendar. You have items B through D, and I do not expect any announcements out. Fantastic. Thank you, everyone, for attending today's meeting, and have a wonderful week, and go Bruins. <laughs>